are a number of reasons why not everybody would want to live in Fresno. It could be traffic or a cheaper lifestyle or maybe just desiring a more rural feel. Amongst plenty of other reasons, of course. And while there are a ton of suburbs to pick around Fresno, California, not all of them are good options. So I did a little digging and paid a visit to the suburbs around Fresno and came up with the best and worst suburbs around Fresno, California. What's going on, my beautiful people? My name is Mark Benneke, your Fresno area realtor. And in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the best and worst suburbs surrounding Fresno, California. Plus, there might be a bonus or two in there, so make sure to stick around till the end. It'll be split into two categories, best and worst. <laughs> That's pretty easy, right? Each of these suburbs is unique in its own way and offers a different lifestyle. But let's just get straight into it. Let's start off with the best. I'm not planning on doing a ranking order with these, but it's also hard not to mention the one that just clearly blows all of the rest out of the water. Number one, Clovis. The way that Clovis currently sits, it's more of like an extension of Fresno. It kind of blends together and you don't really realize when you've actually crossed into it. I'm positive that a few years in the future, this will change. But for now, they're kind of like Siamese twins, where one is smaller, but dramatically prettier. Clovis has a population of a little over 100,000 people that live on roughly 26 square miles of land. The interesting part of Clovis is that as you head further east, north, or south, you reach these very rural areas, while the middle is still very city-like, but the outskirts are definitely very country. So it's pretty easy to understand why the residents around here love their country attire. Their downtown is gorgeous, and you can tell that there's a level of pride that keeps it that way. They have plenty of entertainment, shopping, and amazing restaurants, and they also have a very strong economy. Uh. There is plenty of opportunity that can be found around here. Median household income is sitting at over 90000 with a very low poverty rate, while average home prices are sitting at around 500000 Crime is extremely low for not only violent, but property crime as well. And don't even get me started on the fact that it has hands down the best schools in all of the Fresno area. There is no competition here. Clovis takes the cake by a long shot. Number two, Kingsburg. Behind Clovis comes the beautiful town of Kingsburg. No ranking anymore, just that all of them are gonna be behind Clovis. <laughs> Kingsburg is actually about 20 minutes out from Fresno. And if you ask anyone who's lived there, it will give you a very positive outlook on the town. It's not big, far from it, but it has a massive personality. It's about a 10th of the population of Clovis, so not even 15,000 people. But the town feels very well put together and cared for. It's about four square miles of land, so clearly you can get a good idea of how small it actually is. But if you head further out, you can see that there's a lot of room to grow. And because of that, there's a lot of new development that's happening around here. A few new builds for residential homes have popped up and will likely continue to do so since the town is so highly revered. Just like Clovis, Kingsburg has a beautiful downtown with a ton of personality. They really take their Swedish roots and just run with them. And they also have a very strong economy here as well. Median household income is sitting at just under 90,000 with the average home price sitting at roughly 470,000. Now some are much lower than this and there's also others that are much higher than that. The beautiful part of Kingsburg is that it's actually considered a very affordable area. The cost of living here is substantially lower than the rest of California. Not to mention that their school district is actually pretty high on the charts. Moving on to number three, a little further out from Kingsburg and you hit Reedley, California. And Reedley is truly a beautiful town. It's come a very long way in a very short amount of time. You can get there from Fresno in about 30 minutes, which if you know our traffic around here, it actually is 30 minutes because we don't really have traffic. <laughs> You've got about 25,000 people that call Reedley their home. And it sits on about 5.5 square miles of land. And like most of the other towns on this list, Reedley has tons of room to keep growing. And also like the other towns on the best section, there is much new development happening around here too. A lot of new construction of both residential and commercial properties are taking place. And it's really no surprise considering that the town has really drawn a lot of people into it. This could have something to do with their community college and their fairly strong K through 12 program. Their rate of graduation is pretty high, especially for the Reedley Community College. There's definitely a downtown that is very well cared for, but not quite as full of personality as the other two that I've just mentioned. They do have quite a bit of entertainment and bars. But the biggest thing of note is their amazing restaurants. Median income here sits around $50,000, with the average home prices sitting at only $380,000. Reedley is considered a pretty <laughs> affordable place to live, quite a bit lower than the rest of California. And overall, when you drive through here, you can definitely tell that there's a sense of belonging for the residents. Number four, Sunnyside. This is technically a part of Fresno, but it's on the deep southeast side of it. So technically, it's a suburb. The beauty of the Sunnyside area is that as of a few years ago, it began to see tons of new development that really revitalized the area. There's a couple spots around here that are old, but have some really expensive pockets where the homes are big with lots of land and highly sought after. They used to be very rural, but now with the new residential and commercial projects, they've begun to get quite a bit of amenities nearby. I won't really talk about downtown here because, well, well, Fresno's downtown is pretty 
<laughs> at least I don't like it at all. It's headed in the right direction as new projects have actually been put together to bring it back on track. But for now, it's <laughs> roughly 5,000 residents call Sunnyside their home. And they're provided their very own country club, the Sunnyside Country Club. Education levels here are actually fairly high, with the majority of people having actually graduated from high school, and many of them going on to get their bachelor's and even their master's. Nightlife is going to be very high here, as clearly you're sharing everything with Fresno. Tons of bars, restaurants, clubs, concerts, lots to enjoy. Average income around here is over 90000 and housing will be a pretty big range, from as low as 350000 to well over a million. It's quite a range. I know. Those were the four best suburbs around Fresno, California. Time for my shameless plug. <laughs> if you happen to know anybody that would need help either buying or selling their home in any of these areas, please know that I would be eternally grateful for any of your referrals. My direct information is in the description below. Now before we get on to the worst, here's a bonus one for you. Bryant, California. It's a super small town. Super small. Like, less than a thousand people live here. And it's like almost a square mile of land. Almost no amenities. Decent schools. Decent cost of living, housing that sits at about five fifty to six hundred thousand, and an average income of about sixty thousand. So, why did I put this in as a bonus? Doesn't sound like it really stands out much, does it? Well, the reason I threw it in here is because it's actually very close to Fresno, twenty minutes or so from downtown, and even closer to like the River Park area. So you have pretty much all of those amenities. But that's not what I mean. It's about five minutes out from North Fresno, so you have all of the nice, safe seclusion away from the bad parts of Fresno, while also being provided with the rural mountain living with stunning scenery. It's gorgeous, and it also has two things that really make it stand out. The Table Mountain Casino is right next door, as well as Brighton Crest, which is one of the most luxurious neighborhoods that you could find in all of Fresno County. It even has a golf club within the community, and houses that are just, just wow. <laughs> Alright, so those are your best suburbs around Fresno. Now, let's move on to the horrifying ones. <laughs> They're really not that bad, except for some of them. They're pretty bad. They're definitely not going to be places that I would always recommend. Like, I might even steer you away from them. Unless, of course, there's a specific reason why you want to be there. Starting off will be Orange Cove. It's about 40 minutes out from Fresno, and it has about 10,000 people to call it home. And they are crammed into about two square miles of land. On a positive note, they do actually have some pretty tasty restaurants. But their entertainment, activity, shopping, it's, uh, well, it's non-existent. The town feels very underdeveloped with no real structure and much of it is rural and not even the pretty rural type just like lots of dirt and really <laughs> up roads and the real kicker here is that nearly half of the people that you come across are living under the poverty line even worse the median household income is just under twenty five thousand dollars and the school system is absolutely nothing to brag about not to mention that the crime rate here is very high much higher than the national average now the average home prices are sitting at around three hundred thousand or a little bit lower but i really don't know if i'd want to live somewhere just because it's really cheap. The city has seen no real new development for quite some time, and it's very unlikely that it will anytime soon. Number two, Mendota. So how does Mendota fare? Not much better. Actually, not better at all. They have a very high crime rate, so it's not very safe, and it's also about 40 minutes out from Fresno. You just take the 180 freeway all the way through, and once you get there, you'll find a very high rate of unemployment. So out of the 13,000 people that live there, nearly 2,000 of them will be unemployed. Well, at least they're not as crammed as Orange Cove, since they have a little over three square miles to move around, but there's not much entertainment or nightlife here. However, there are a few Mexican restaurants that I've personally been to here that are pretty good, so at least they can enjoy that. Average household income is at about 33,000, which is higher than the OC. Not Orange County, Orange Coast. And yet, just like the OC, about 50% of the people here are under the poverty line as well. Homes are sitting at about the same, 300,000, and no new development has been seen here or likely will be anytime soon. Oh, and did I mention the low education level? Yeah, nearly 60% of the population here has undergone no schooling. Next up, Delray. This is a place that, well, I don't really know what to say. It's just the Place. That's about 20 minutes out from Fresno, and it's got a whopping 1,300 people that continue declining year after year. Surprisingly though, it's almost the size of Orange Cove, 1.3 square miles. To be honest, I don't even know if I can call this place a town yet, but it is, and it's a suburb of Fresno, so it's on the list. Your average household income is under 30000 And something interesting is that on the outskirts of it, you'll actually find some pretty big homes. But for the most part, you're going to come across two to $300,000 homes that are... Meh. Out of those 1,300 people, over 140 of them are unemployed, and a large chunk of the rest are living under poverty. Like the other areas here, the schooling is really f***ing low, so don't expect to go there and talk philosophy with anybody. Education is not something that you can change overnight. It takes time. However, spreading kindness is immediate 
and tends to multiply itself. So make sure that you're kind to someone today. Maybe someone from one of these areas or closer to you. And while you're at it, please consider being kind to me by doing something that is totally free for you. I thank you in advance. Next up will be Orosi. It's about 40 minutes out from Fresno and has a population of about 8,000 people. And that doesn't seem to be getting any bigger either. If anything, it's actually getting smaller. Those 8,000 people are crammed into about 2.4 square miles of land, and it also does not have really any entertainment close by. The closest entertainment would be found in Visalia, which that's actually not close either. They do have fairly good restaurants though. The majority of them are Mexican food joints though, which I personally love, but if you don't, just stay the <laughs> Household income is actually roughly 50,000, which is a big step up from the other contenders in the list. And yet nearly a thousand out of the 8,000 people that live here are unemployed. And over 50% of the adults here have no high school diploma or even went past the ninth grade. The rate of education is clearly very low. There are small areas of the town that feel pretty decent though, but overall, it doesn't feel the greatest or the safest. Violent crime and property crime are really high here. It's not one of the places that I would consciously recommend that anybody lives. I would actually even try to steer you in a different direction. The direction of your bonus. Pinedale, California. Okay, maybe not, actually. I won't try to steer you here. It's a pretty big <laughs> barrier. That is right smack in the middle of Fresno. It's actually surrounded by quite a bit of nice. It's in the north side of Fresno, so you'd think that it would be really great. But instead, it's a tiny little pocket that is rough. It's small, but you'll find quite a bit of people just jam-packed in there. You could drive through it really quickly, but as you do, you'll see that it's the type of place that the residents just decide to park the car right on the lawn. The houses look all tore up. The yards and the decorations are all just up. It's not nice, and it definitely does not feel safe. It may be surrounded by the best parts of Fresno, but it doesn't belong to it, and I doubt Fresno wants to claim it. <laughs> what do you think? Did I miss anything? Maybe I went too easy on the best suburbs, or maybe a little bit too hard on the worst ones. I'm open to hear what your thoughts are. Go ahead, rag on me. And I'm also open to answering any questions that you might have, so make sure to drop them in the comment section below. Now that you know all of these suburbs better, you're probably wondering which one of these can provide you a great lifestyle without breaking your bank. Which is why I'm actually so excited for you to watch this video down here on the most affordable suburbs around Fresno, California. Thanks, and I'll see you there. Okay, bye!